There is only one Saiyan who can be considered the chosen one. The one with a natural talent far beyond the masses. A young Saiyan who would save the world. His name is Son Gohan. Son of Kakarot or Goku. Hello, my name is Bugsy and today's conversation will revolve around Gohan and how he is the chosen one of Dragon Ball Z. Now, what exactly is the chosen one? The chosen one being a character with a natural ability far beyond expectations and quite frankly, gifted by God. For anyone who has seen Dragon Ball Z, we all can collectively love Super Saiyan 2 Teen Gohan, by far one of the coolest versions of him and the character with one of the most epic Kamehamehas to date. However, we see the character not get the same love in the Buu Saga and also in Dragon Ball Super, which I will be explaining why that is the case. I believe Gohan is a complex character who typically gets misinterpreted by the masses. Sit down, relax, grab your snacks, and vibe out while we explore how Gohan is the chosen one. Saiyan Saga, we are introduced to a new character, a small boy with a green tunic, a red hat with the four star Dragon Ball, and a tail? Oh, Daddy the Z fighters who we all know from OG Dragon Ball have no idea who this child is. Also, spoiler warning, if you somehow have not seen Dragon Ball Z all the way through, I advise you to first of all leave a like on the video and subscribe and click that join button and make sure to comment that you haven't seen the entire anime. But once you do see the entire anime, come back to this video and then watch the video on how Gohan is indeed the chosen one. Back to the video essay. Goku then informs the Z fighters and the audience that the young boy is his son, Gohan, obviously named after Grandpa Gohan who did indeed raise Goku during OG Dragon Ball. Of course the audience is surprised that Goku would have a son, but more surprised of how well-mannered Gohan is. Gohan hides behind his father. He is very timid and well-mannered, which is the opposite of Goku. Bulma asks Gohan what he wants to be and he says, I want to be a scholar, which of course is not expected from a Saiyan. Yes, I know that the audience did not know what a Saiyan was, moreover, he didn't have the same battle hunger like his father. Goku explains to the Z fighters that he hasn't been able to train him because Chi Chi does not allow it. Raditz shows up and gives a history lesson on the Saiyans and who Goku's real identity is. He eventually abducts Gohan and takes him to the space pod to chill. You know, he's sitting there reading some manga, having some snacks, you know what I'm saying, watching some YouTube. He's actually watching Buggy's video while he's sitting in the space pod. So, you know, he's actually, you know, not having too much trouble at the moment. While Raditz is waiting for Goku, his scouter keeps detecting a powerful foe and it keeps pointing towards Gohan. Gohan is crying and clearly upset, which leads to Raditz believing that the scouter is broken. This was the first sign of Gohan's potential. Gohan's power is rooted in his emotions. Fast forward, when Piccolo and Goku are fighting Raditz, we see Raditz gain the upper hand against Goku. Goku starts screaming in agony, which Gohan hears. He then breaks out of the pod, which surprises everyone. We see this yellow aura surrounding Gohan, and he is very, very angry. Gohan's power level jumped all the way to 1370 which according to Raditz is impossible for a kid. A small detail but the foreshadowing of Gohan's immense potential. He flies towards Raditz. Yes flies. Something that Goku cannot even do at this point and headbutts the fuck out of Raditz. Like cuz really hit him with the <laughs> The chest plate bursts and we see Raditz in pain. Gohan has inflicted damage to the battle hardened Saiyan. Goku, Piccolo, Raditz and even the audience are shocked by what has transpired. Raditz's scouter shows that Gohan's power level dropped down to one. Gohan is back to his normal state and then he gets knocked out by his uncle. Eventually, we see that Raditz is defeated and Gohan is still knocked out cold. Piccolo decides that he will train Gohan so that the Z fighters will have a legitimate chance to combat the Saiyans when they come to Earth in a year's time. We have seen a small glimpse of Gohan's power. It is time to explore how Piccolo's training foreshadowed more of Gohan's unlimited power. Piccolo takes Gohan and is determined to train him, which not only surprises the Z fighters, but the audience. Let's remember that Piccolo still wants to conquer the Earth and defeat Goku. Piccolo wakes up Gohan and explains the situation to him. His father died, two more incredibly strong Saiyans will be coming in a year, and that he needs to be trained to help. Gohan says that he is just a little boy and that he is not strong at all. Piccolo gives a grin and decides to test the theory of Gohan being just a little boy by throwing him at a mountain. Now, if Child Protective Services came through, I don't think that they would do anything, but that's besides the point. Gohan ends up raging, which causes the same aura to come around him, and he blasts through the mountain. 
This surprises Piccolo, but also Gohan as well, the conclusion being that Gohan's power comes from his emotion. During the year of training, Gohan becomes stronger and stronger, sparring with Piccolo, surviving in the wilderness, and eventually developing a friendship with Piccolo. Eventually, the Saiyans come down to Earth, and we see Gohan's first time in battle. Surprisingly, he did not perform as well as Piccolo and the Z Fighters. Gohan is still quite fearful and does not believe in his own ability. After watching Tien and Chatu die, we see the sad scene of Piccolo sacrificing himself for Gohan, and we see that Piccolo really cared for Gohan. Gohan realized that his weakness is what causes many of his friends to die, and his best friend, some call him father figure, Piccolo, to die. <laughs> Gohan rages and attacks Nappa, and we see that he is strong enough to fight off these monsters. To sum up the Saiyan saga regarding Gohan, he only does well when he is extremely angry or his emotions are rampant. When he is in a controlled mindset, he does not perform well. However, glimpses of him being the chosen one or even the strongest was shown throughout the fight. The short burst of times he actually fought, the enemy was overwhelmed and given more time and training, Gohan could have either won or inflicted major damage. Before we dive into the Namek Saga, I do want to talk about how Gohan did transform into a great ape. We see during this time that Goku is encouraging Gohan to believe in his ability, to believe that he can control the Ozaru form which again does become relevant in the near future in Dragon Ball Z. Let's dive into the Namek Saga where we see a more mature Gohan and battle ready. In the beginning of the Namek Saga, we see the Z fighters in the hospital getting treatment, which is hilarious given the fact that Sensu Beans would have instantly recovered them. But according to Korin, the Sensu Beans would not be ready for a month, which is why they were in the hospital. Regardless, Gohan argues against his mother and says that he needs to help out on the mission going to Namek to recover the new Dragon Ball to bring back his friends who have already died once. The first time we see Gohan snap is against the Doria. Gohan gets his inner strength awakened by the Elder Namekian. Gohan's power increased so much that Vegeta believed that it was Goku. <laughs> Fast forward to the important part of the Namek Saga is Gohan fighting off the Ginyu Force and even Frieza at one point. We see Gohan get obliterated by Raccoon and his neck ends up getting broken. He didn't stand a chance against them, but why? With all this unbound power, why can't Gohan stand a fighting chance? Well, it is because he cannot tap into his anger. Very similar in Star Wars when Palpatine tells Anakin to use the dark side of the force to increase his power. And to increase the dark side of the force in Anakin, he had to go to the Jedi Temple, kill a bunch of Jedi, and kill a bunch of kids. Which, you know what I'm saying, uh, George Lucas, if you ever decide to have an Operation Nightfall TV show, we can, we can sit here and work it out, you know what I'm saying? Anyways, back to the video essay. Gohan needs to use his anger to increase his battle power. He uses it when fighting against second form Frieza. Whenever one of Gohan's friends gets hurt, that is when he decides to lock in for a small amount of time. Gohan was putting a whooping on Frieza, but it still wasn't enough due to the lack of power he had. Regardless, we still see glimpses of his power during these interactions. Gohan after this point does not do anything substantial and we are shown the legendary Goku vs Frieza fight. Now let's dive into the arc that caused everyone to love son Gohan. The Android Saga continuing into the Cell Saga is one of the most important arcs regarding Gohan. Not only do we see a Gohan that is clearly showing signs of becoming a better fighter, we see him become the best fighter. In the beginning of the Android Saga, we see Gohan with the Z Fighters as a mysterious warrior from the future shows up. We learn that this is Trunks, son of Vegeta and Bulma, and he destroys Frieza with ease. Most importantly, he turns into a Super Saiyan and he comes with a warning to the fighters. The androids, which are the enemies that destroyed the future, will be coming soon and they need to prepare. Gohan trains with Piccolo and Goku. When the androids arrive, Gohan seems quite prepared, but even against Android 19 and 20, he is still quite fearful. Yamcha gets stabbed through the chest, Goku succumbs to the heart virus, and somehow Vegeta has turned into a Super Saiyan? Enough about that, let's regain folks regarding Gohan during this arc. 
Gohan does not get much screen time until Cell gets introduced into the story. In fact, in the Dragon Ball Z anime, Gohan does not fight Android 18 or 17. Obviously, in the future Gohan, we see him fight against Android 18 and 17, and he loses very, very badly. Dying by a barrage of key blasts, our goat is dead. Now, why his arm went missing, we do not know. But all I know is that future Gohan is the GOAT, goat. and unfortunately, he did succumb to a very painful and sad death. Once Cell is introduced and he achieves his perfect form, he gives the Z Fighters an opportunity to train for the Cell games. We see Gohan and Goku go to the hyperbolic time chamber to train after Vegeta and Trunks. This is one of my favorite moments in Dragon Ball Z because we see how good of a father Goku is to Gohan. Goku is stern with his son, but is not mean. He sees the effort Gohan puts in and praises him accordingly. Gohan has a flashback of all of his friends getting hurt or dying and blames himself for it. He says, I've been letting people down my whole life. Well, to be fair, Gohan, you were fighting some of the strongest enemies at four years old all the way to 11. So you can have some grace if we are being honest. He claims that he was too weak, that if he wasn't scared, none of this would have happened. This self-loathing and anger causes him to turn into a Super Saiyan. Gohan uses the pain of loss to transform, similar to his father when he witnessed his best friend get blown to smithereens. After Gohan achieves Super Saiyan, gets a haircut and eats, we do not see the rest of the training that happens in the hyperbolic time chamber. However, we do see them leave the hyperbolic time chamber in their Super Saiyan form to get used to it. Then we get the filler episodes of Gohan, Goku, and Krillin relaxing. Honestly, I love seeing the filler episodes because it showed not only how much Goku loves his son, but the vice versa. Seeing how this was the last happy moments they shared together before fighting Cell and before Goku sacrifice. It is actually crazy how this amplifies Goku's sacrifice tenfold, seeing how he was immediately ready to permanently die for his friends and his son. During their time not training, it is similar to the teaching that Roshi had for Goku and Krillin. The resting that Goku and Gohan did is what caused them to surpass Vegeta and Trunks. Let's talk about how everyone wants to hear about Cell vs Gohan. Cell vs Gohan is the pinnacle of Dragon Ball Z and a moment that everyone can unanimously agree is peak fiction. Gohan achieved the form that even his father was unable to achieve. While some people may find it weird that Gohan achieved Super Saiyan 2 due to Android 16 dying, I believe it makes sense. Android 16 is similar to Gohan in the sense that they both do not enjoy fighting but will fight if necessary. Android 16 tells Gohan that it is okay to fight to protect those that you love and to protect the earth, the birds, and nature. Of course, this is going to affect Gohan because of his kind-hearted nature. Plus, it doesn't help that Android 16 was literally ahead talking until Cell crushed him and disrespected the dead android. While Gohan is processing everything that the android says to him, he recognizes that Android 16 was a person he could have saved but didn't. Everything came into a full circle. From the moment he lost control in hyperbolic time chamber to losing control against Cell, he is furious and when we hear this scream and he begins to transform, the screen is shaking. Music intensifying, and the shock on the character's face make the moment incredible. Every aspect about this scene is some of the best cooked up in the anime and even in the manga. When people talk about who has aura or what aura is in anime, Super Saiyan 2 Gohan should immediately come to mind. Once Gohan transforms into a Super Saiyan 2, he is a completely different character. He is no longer the kind-hearted boy who we saw prior to Cell killing Android 16. Gohan quickly disposes of these Cell Juniors and has his focus on Cell. Gohan does not even try with Cell, which shows how much of a power gap there was between the two characters. He decides to toy with Cell and make him suffer. After three punches, he causes Cell to go back to his imperfect form. Gohan's pride is through the roof. He is embodying what a Saiyan is, a real warrior, which becomes one of the greatest mistakes that he makes. Cell takes the opportunity to inflate himself and chooses to blow himself up and the earth. Gohan becomes clear minded and realizes how badly he messed up and he doesn't know what to do. Goku knows what must be done and he decides to make the ultimate sacrifice once again. He tells Gohan that he's proud of him and to tell his mother he is sorry for not making it back home. Well, our protagonist Goku is gone in a flash and we assume that is the end of Cell.
until he returns back in his perfect form and completely obliterates Trunks. Vegeta decides to stick up for his son and attack Cell, which looked like for half a second he was going to actually cause damage to him. Well, it is Vegeta, and he ends up getting his arm broke and that results in Gohan saving him, which results in his arm being broken. By the way, this is the first time that Vegeta has ever apologized to Gohan. I'm sorry, Gohan. I am sorry. I never thought I'd hear that from Vegeta. Gohan believes all hope is lost, that Cell will end up destroying everyone and the Earth because he was too weak. Goku comes back and reminds his son that he has the power to defeat Cell. Goku telling him to use the pain of his friends who suffered at his power is the catalyst for him channeling the remaining power he had left. We hear an amazing yell from Gohan as he walks towards Cell using the one arm Kamehameha. And Cell is gone for good. He saves the world at 11 years old, and with the use of the Dragon Balls, Trunks comes back to life. Unfortunately, Goku is unable to come back to life because this would be the second time that he dies. This is the end of Gohan's arc during the Cell Saga, and well, we have the Boo Saga. While many people are not a fan of Gohan during the Boo Saga, I will briefly go over his involvement and jump straight into Dragon Ball Super. during the Buu Saga was a completely different person of the Teen Gohan we knew from the Cell Saga. Gohan does not continue training and decides to go to school and become a scholar. In his spare time, he becomes the Great Saiyan Man. Now I'm not gonna lie, seeing Gohan in a do-rag and some Versace shades is kinda hard. Unfortunately, he chooses to be a fake hero and helps the police, which is crazy, but hey, he is Gohan. Soon, he meets a classmate that is Videl. She discovers who his real identity is and wants to be trained. Gohan ends up training her and teaching her how to use key energy. Fast forward to the tournament, we see Gohan fight and it is disappointing to say the least. Due to his lack of training, he is behind the curveball by a large margin when he's unable to defeat Bokovic and the twin. Once we see Vegeta, Gohan, Goku, and the Supreme Kai go down the ship to find Babidi, Vegeta scolds Gohan for being too weak. That his lack of training is a disgrace given how he was the strongest warrior years prior to that. Gohan acknowledges the error of not training and how it has caused issues. We see later during the arc that Gohan ends up unable to defeat the Bora when he should have been able to. Once Fat Buu appears, our goat Froghorn has no chance. In fact, he gets whooped so badly, he ends up dying. We see Gohan train with the Kai and ends up achieving a new form. This form will be known as Ultimate, which is a form stronger than Super Saiyan 2. Gohan is given Kabuto's life force and is given a chance to go back to Earth to fight Super Buu. Gohan is stronger than Super Buu during this scene, but the same flaw he had in the Cell Saga is repeated. Gohan's ego caused him to not take Super Buu down when he had the opportunity which leads to him getting absorbed by Boo, which makes it inevitable for anyone to defeat him. That pretty much sums up Gohan during the Boo saga. To summarize it all, he became a scholar, got a girlfriend, achieved a new form, becoming the strongest once again, and sold the bag. The end. My disappointment is immeasurable and my day is ruined. Dragon Ball Super did some insane damage to Gohan and to many characters that we love. Whether it was the poor animation early on during the series, which was due to impossible time constraints, the bad music placement, or even the story, there were some things that did not work well. One of those being the development of Gohan. Gohan during Dragon Ball Super is honestly forgettable. Not only did it become super skinny, bodied by Frieza, and then it become relevant to determine the power, there just wasn't anything special for our GOAT. Remember, we are discussing anime only. I would not be discussing about the manga in this video until we have more chapters to discuss. Let's talk about Dragon Ball Super Superhero Movie. Gohan is the same studious nerdy half saying that we know. The audience and characters assume that Gohan had not been training. That is not the case. After Pang is kidnapped, Gohan decides to lock in and goes to retrieve his daughter. We see that he is not weak or pathetic like we've seen him in the Buu Saga or Dragon Ball Super. Once Cell Max shows up, we see Gohan starting to struggle a bit up until Piccolo gets him Sensu Bean and tells him that he has a power hidden inside of him. As Dragon Ball fans, we have heard this a lot and felt that Gohan had peaked early on. However, that was incorrect and Piccolo knew that. Once Piccolo goes limp, we see an immediate callback to Gohan turning Super Saiyan 2 and the Cell art. Except this time, Gohan goes into a new form that we have never seen before. Not a god form at all. One form completely made up on his own. We get Beast, Gohan, red eyes, silver hair, and an incredibly long bang. Our GOAT is back and he is not here to play. Gohan completely obliterates Cell Max, 
and with a visually stunning special being canon, he saves the Earth once again. I remember during the movie playing in theaters, many people were angry about this B transformation and that it was only given to him because Goku and Vegeta got their god forms. Let's remember, Gohan has always had an incredible power level and potential since he was 4 years old during the early stages of Dragon Ball Z. Gohan's power has always come out when he is in high stress situations or very angry. Is it possible that Gohan could have achieved his beast form earlier if he continued training as much as his father and Vegeta? Possibly, but that is not how Toriyama Sensei intended Gohan to be. Of course, we see more development in the manga, but I will hold off on discussing that or make a short members only slash Patreon exclusive video covering Gohan and the manga. To wrap things up, I believe Gohan is a well written character. In fact, he is a very well written character and one of the best characters in the anime. With Gohan, everything is not right in your face and takes time to develop. Right in this video analysis and going back to the manga and even the anime, there are so many details that people gloss over. It makes perfect sense for Gohan's character to be this way. It makes sense for him to achieve his own form exclusive to him. Even if Beast form is stronger or equal to Ultra Instinct and Ultra Ego, it makes perfect sense because it is Gohan, the chosen one. While there is not much information regarding what Beast form is, I am sure Toyotaro will expand on it once he comes back from his hiatus. I hope everyone enjoyed this extremely long character analysis on Son Gohan. If you made it this far, thank you for watching it all the way through. Comment Super Saiyan Duke Gohan and your favorite Dragon Ball Z moment to have a pinned comment on today's video. Remember to leave a like and comment and subscribe. Have a great day. It's been Bugsy. I'm out of here. Peace.